if you have been using 3D software such as Blender, 3ds Max, or Maya, you do probably realize that we are living through interesting times in terms of how these software are being developed and how people are reacting to the new changes in this field. In this video, we're going to talk about a few things that Blender as a company is doing right that Autodesk needs to learn to make things better for its users in the future. The pace of software development. Compared to the other 3D packages, the rate at which Blender is being developed right now is just amazing. Every few months, Blender artists see their software grow to help them do more things using new features and tools that Blender developers come up with. Even though Blender was not stagnant before, the speed of development was slow compared to what we are seeing now, especially knowing that Blender did not have a lot of features compared to software such as Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D or Softimage back in the 2000s. But now since the Blender Foundation can afford to hire more developers using the development fund, things are changing for the better as we have seen. Probably a lot of people don't know that Autodesk Media and Entertainment Division that is responsible for developing software such as 3ds Max and Maya is just a small division of the beast that Autodesk is. Because Autodesk as a company was founded in 1982 by John Walker, who was a co-founder of the first version of AutoCAD, which is the flagship software of Autodesk. So basically Autodesk was a computer-aided design software developer that are primarily used by architects, engineers, and structural designers. And this was the case many years before they had discrete logic and launched the multimedia unit in 1996 under the name of Kinetics to publish 3ds Max, which is a product developed by the Yoast Group. Other than 3ds Max, most of the major 3D packages they have or they had before were acquired and they were not internally developed. Throughout the years, Autodesk augmented its entertainment division with many acquisitions. One of the most significant was in October 2005 when Autodesk acquired Alias Systems for an estimated $182 million and merged its animation business into the entertainment division of Autodesk. And in 2008, it acquired the technology of the former Softimage company from Avid Technology. And in 2016, Autodesk acquired the powerful render engine known as Arnold to become the cornerstone for rendering in 3D packages such as 3ds Max and Maya. Even though we are seeing more updates and new tools and features in Autodesk Media and Entertainment Software, a good portion of the artists that use 3ds Max and Maya are not really happy about what they are getting, especially knowing that Autodesk recently increased the cost of the yearly subscription from $1,500 to $1,620, which is not a huge jump, but if you are a striving artist or if you own a studio that uses multiple subscriptions, it will make a difference in how much you will be paying. As we said before, the Autodesk Media and Entertainment Division is a small part of the giant company that Autodesk is, because it represents only 10% of the overall revenue. In 2020, for example, the total revenue of Autodesk is more than $3 billion, which is huge. So from that $3 billion, only 10% of it comes from entertainment software such as Maya and 3ds Max, which is close to $300 million at this point. So if we take a close look at what is going on here, we can see that the Blender Foundation is getting only about $100,000 from the development fund to hire around 20 developers to work on Blender's features and tools, but from what we can see, they are doing a better job at making their users happy compared to the whopping $300 million that Autodesk Entertainment Division is generating and the progress they are making. But to be fair, I must admit that Autodesk developers have made some progress in recent years nonetheless. I know that this comparison is not scientific, but we are trying to make a point here. If we take 3ds Max for example, the 2021 release is probably the best release in the decade because they have added new tools and features that make sense and can help artists do their jobs faster and better. But if we take a look at the 2020 features updates video on Autodesk YouTube channel, you will see a lot of unhappy people, which takes us to the next point. Is competition good for innovation? Even though adding tools and features is a good thing, I would say that it is not everything because ignoring necessary features and adding features that no one is going to use is not a good thing. I do know that Autodesk as a company knows that customer satisfaction is a very important part of being a successful business. And from what we can see in the last couple of years in 3ds Max for example, we are seeing more and more important features being added rather than marketing stuff just to bring more investors to push Autodesk value in the stock market. I might be wrong, but I think it has something to do with how good Blender has become as a 3D package in the last couple of years too. I do believe that Autodesk Entertainment and Media Division found themselves in a situation where they have to make their 3D packages such as 3ds Max and Maya better, so people find a good reason to keep using them instead of just switching to using Blender. 
which is what many artists are doing because it made a lot of sense to them. Since they have been using a 3D package that has been almost stagnant for many years, and suddenly they have a fantastic 3D package that can do a lot of amazing stuff for free. I'm not saying that 3DS Max or Maya are not good compared to Blender right now, in fact they are amazing and they are heavily used in film and video game development to create the most amazing projects. But especially for solo artists who value every dollar they make, Blender is a very tempting option right now, even if they spend so many years using 3DS Max or Maya. But there are a lot of artists also who use Blender and Autodesk products because they want the best from both worlds. Which in my opinion is better than using Blender alone or 3DS Max or Maya alone. A lot of people don't realize that competition is a healthy thing and end users like me and you are the biggest winners because it will push companies to innovate and move the bar higher. If artists don't have a powerful software that they can use for free such as Blender, I am almost certain that Autodesk will keep adding these little features that no one is gonna care about or use, but since we do have a really strong software such as Blender, they will keep moving on their feet and change things for the better slowly but surely. In the past, Autodesk dealt with the software that competed with them differently by acquiring them instead of beating them in the marketplace, like they did with Maya and Softimage. But since Blender is apparently not for sale, they will have to take the other way around, which is actually to make their software better to stay relevant. Third-party add-on development For Autodesk software third-party developers, there are some things that are different from being a Blender add-on developer. Let's take as an example 3ds Max for instance. If you are a 3ds Max developer, you need to pay an ADN or what is known as Autodesk Developer Network. But the first year is gonna be for free. The 3ds Max development ecosystem is really different from the Blender one. Max license is really expensive and people using Max want everything for the price they pay for the yearly subscription, which is something understandable because a lot of Autodesk users sometimes can afford to pay the price of the yearly subscription. This results in the plugin developer having some difficulties in selling if we add up all the price of the subscription to the hundreds of dollars of the add-ons. So Max users are not really in the habit of paying for scripture add-ons as much as Blender users do because Blender is free and paying 100 bucks or two for add-ons is not gonna hurt. Autodesk ecosystem is closed. So as developers, if you want to sell your products, you have to protect it. While with Blender being open source, there is no need to protect your code or add in DRM because people know it is for free and open source and they want to provide you with money to allow you to do even better. Being an add-on developer exposed developers to a big risk, which is finding themselves developing the same features and tools that are going to be released in the next version. For example, one developer released an add-on for fixing and improving the broken Max Chamfer, and the next thing he knows, Autodesk focused on fixing the Max Chamfer modifier, which means that nobody would purchase his add-on. But I guess after all it is for the greater good if the 3D package becomes better so people don't have to pay a lot of money for it. But at the end of the day, being an Autodesk developer is difficult. That's why more and more people are choosing to develop third-party plugins and add-ons for Blender instead. So in terms of third-party innovation, Blender is the leading 3D package because there are so many third-party developers working on new features and tools that can help artists do their job easier and faster, since there are fewer restrictions and more opportunity to sell their add-ons. If Autodesk wants their third-party developers to help them innovate and help them push forward their technology, like what we are seeing with Blender, they have to lower the barrier of entry and work closely with them to create a healthy environment for these people who honestly spend a lot of time and energy and sometimes money to solve problems that artists are facing. From what we can see, there are two kinds of developers who work with Autodesk. Small developers who create small scripts and modeling add-ons as a side project, to sell them for a few dollars here and there. And there are big developers with plugins that are essential for big budget projects like visual effects for film and TV shows, such as FilmFX, Phoenix FD, Thinking Particles, and rendering plugins like V-Ray, Octane, Redshift, and so on. But I don't think that big developers are facing any real problems because usually there are established companies with many developers working with them to create the most powerful tools that artists and studios buy for hundreds of dollars. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to say, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.